I'm rising today because we've reached another crisis point in our country. And in 2014, we had almost 19,000 people die to prescription drug opiate overdose. This is legal prescriptions. This is by companies that basically developed a product legally. We had the FDA who basically said we should use it. It's good for us. We had our doctors saying, yes, this is what you should do. So basically, we have an epidemic on our hand that we all believed was basically going to help us. 16% more people died in 2014 than they died in 2013. We've lost 200,000 Americans since 1999, 200,000. And if that's not an epidemic, I don't know what it is. I really don't know. Unfortunately, a major barrier to those suffering opiate addiction, these are opiate addiction, legal prescription drugs, is insufficient access to substance abuse treatment centers. Between 2009, Mr. President, 2013, only 22% of those who were suffering from addiction could find treatment. Only 22%. And for so long, we kind of put our head in the sands and basically thought that this was a crime. It wasn't basically an illness. And an illness, now that we've come to understand, needs treatment. And we're way behind the, uh, the scale on this. In my state of West Virginia, 42,000 West Virginians, including 4,000 youth. These are kids younger than 16 years of age sought treatment for illegal abuse, but they failed to find it. Now think about this, if you're a parent or a grandparent and you're dying, your kids are begging for help. The only way they can find any help today is to get them arrested, get a felony on them. Then the, the judge will send them to drug court. That's it, that's their alternative. Well, that's not one I think as Americans that we should be settling for. The longest long-term West Virginia facility in West Virginia is 100 beds, it's recovery point. It's run by all former addicts. These were people that basically their lives were destroyed. And they got together and says, we can help people. We can save them. As mentoring, they bring them in. It's a year-long program. It has the greatest success stories of anything we have in our state. In 2014, about 15,000 West Virginians treated uh, some, they got some sort of treatment for drug alcohol abuse treatment. But nearly 60,000 people went untreated because they couldn't find it or couldn't afford it. Based on conversations with our state police and all law enforcement in the state of West Virginia, eight out of every 10 calls that they're, that they're summoned to for some kind of criminal activity is due to drugs, some form of drugs. All of our young students here will be able to identify with this and the people that have problems. Um, these people recognize they need help and they've been turned away. Myself, I've introduced a piece of legislation with quite a few of my colleagues. I would hope that all my colleagues in this body would look at it very seriously, and it's called Lifeboat. The Lifeboat basically simply says this. We need to have a fee on all opiates, and the reason for this, in the 1980s, we were told this was a drug that was a wonder drug. It'll relieve us of pain 24 hours, not addictive at all. Well, we know what happened there. That wasn't effective, and it wasn't accurate. What we're asking for is one penny, one penny per, per milligram of opiates on all opiate prescriptions, just one penny. That one penny will give continuous funding for treatment centers around the country. That'll bring in about one and a half to two billion dollars a year. I would hope it wouldn't bring in anything. That means we wouldn't have addictions as we have rampant throughout the country. But this is the lifeboat. We would hope people would get on board. I would ask my colleagues on the other side of the aisle. This is not a tax, it's basically a treatment plan. We have fees that we charge for, for, hell, uh, for alcohol. We have a fee for cigarettes, nothing for opiates, and it's destroying as many, if not more, lives. So all this is a common sense approach forward, and I would say to all my colleagues, there won't be a Democrat or Republican family that would hold you against trying to find a treatment uh, program for their child or a loved one or someone in their family. I've come to the floor every, every week to read letters from people that's been affected, their lives have been changed. I have one from my state of West Virginia, and the letter goes, and she writes, she says, in elementary school, I believe the fourth grade, my daughter, became a cheerleader for Pop Warner football. Then in the sixth eighth grade through the eighth grade, she cheered for the middle school. Her senior year, she cheered for high school as well. She also played volleyball for the high school and with adult leagues and basketball for Jerry West League. She had excellent grades in school, many friends, and a great personality. To say she was well-rounded is pretty accurate. I'm not quite sure where things went wrong, how we've ended up where we are today. Today and for several years now, my daughter is a drug addict, 
At one time, she was prescribed antidepressants, then nerve pills. Then she broadened to her own choices. She has tried many drugs, but her choice is opiates, legal prescription opiates. She is the mother of our first two grandbabies that are now in custody of family members due to her drug use. She's, the home is unfit for the child to be raised in. She's also a sister, an aunt, a granddaughter, a cousin, a niece, and a friend to so many in our family, and the wife of an addict also. She has been in and out of jail, court, and community corrections several times. I have lost many nights of sleep waiting for the knock at our door or a phone call to tell me I need to come identify my daughter. Thankfully, I'm a lucky one so far. That has not had to be the case. Others have not been as fortunate as I. She has been homeless and sleeping in her car for almost a year, except for the nights that I could beg her to come home and stay with us. Her husband has stole from my family, is not allowed on any of our properties. She feels obligated into staying by his side. I don't know why. She has had several seizure episodes that were drug-related. One time, she was at a local grocery store with our granddaughter. She was transported by ambulance after her four-year-old daughter screamed for help. A four-year-old daughter screaming for help for a mother who's had an overdose of addiction. She went to a 10-day detox, which ended up being a waste. We know that 10 days or a month doesn't do a thing. Um, and she had no place to go for rehab after that. One time she got out of jail and thought she could kick the habit on her own. She couldn't, and back to jail she went. Right now she is in a grant-funded long-term facility. And if you talk to any people in addiction treatment, it takes a minimum of one year to get them through. She has been there almost a month. My heart and hopes are very high. I pray for her and those like her on a daily basis. Addiction is such a cruel and punishing way of life. It leaves scars inside and out. All I'm asking for is this lifeboat piece of legislation will give us a lifeboat to help families that are desperately in need. I would hope everyone would consider this. This is not a burden on anybody. It's not a burden on people taking normal prescriptions. It's only one penny per milligram on opiates produced and used and consumed in the United States. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.